I think it's time for a show and tell of this um, gingerbread kisses folio that I designed. I want to show you this cover. Can you see that kind of glistening paint drops on that? So pretty. I have a tutorial that follows if you're interested. It's going to be tied with this wonderful organdy ribbon that's got a pink check on it. So we open it up and first we see a panel here on the left and there's an adorned Santa Claus tag on the inside with some glitter tool and a little heart that says made with love and it just slots right in here. Open up this next panel and I can show you up close. There's a little pocket I fashioned with a Santa a little heart. It has a tag on the inside that's been adorned with this little tag and some shabby twine and a little pearl dot. This next section is kind of a envelope pocket that I made from scratch and slotting right here in the front is this little Tis the season, a kind of a stamp. This sweet little sentiment about children all nestled in their beds. Such pretty paper. Just a little writing place. So we'll slot those back in here. There's more real estate here for adornment, but I decided to leave that as a place where your eyes just take a little rest. This is a policy envelope, and it's got some little peppermint candies as the closures. So we'll open that up, and you can see inside I fashioned a little pocket um, tag situation thing. I don't know what you'd call it. Made a tag for the inside. It's been embellished with some um, Tim Holtz spray. This isn't the one. I want to show you the green one. There we go. It's Merry Mint that's sprayed on this one. It gives it kind of a pearly sheen that I really like. It's been tied with this fun little bow. I've backed it with that pretty light paper. This is a pocket here in the center. It's a side pocket that's underneath that policy envelope. And it's got this card in here. It says, Merry and Bright. And it's been kissed with some gold snowflakes. So that just slots in here. I adorned this with some trim from the, the uh, doodle bug kit. Inside this pocket, Baking Spirits Bright. This has also been kissed with some snowflakes. Here's a sleeve for the gift card. It's pretty simple, and that's what I was going for, something that was quick and dirty that you'd be able to make. And here's this fun end pocket. It's been adorned with a snowflake and a little gingerbread guy. So it closes up like this, and then like this, and then I will be tying it with this pretty ribbon. So if you want to see the tutorial, you can watch that next. So I love all of those one sheet wonders where you can make a card or a folio out of 12 by 12 inch paper. But I find that in general, um, the finished product is not wide enough for me. So here's one that I made, it's a prototype. And uh, it's just made with one sheet of paper. But the finished product is 
um, tall enough. I think that's like about six inches, but it's only four. So I'm not going to go with that. I had to design something of my own. And so that's what I'm, what I'm going to show you here. So this is my 12 by 12 inch paper. And it's um, one direction. It doesn't look good upside down. So that's another reason why I can't use most of those one sheet wonders because this is directional and it, the finished product doesn't look that good. So I've already sliced off my edge and what I'm gonna do next is cut it in half. So let me grab my cutter. And I have to be careful to cut it in half the right way. I don't want to cut it in half like this. I need to cut it in half like that so that both of my pieces are right side up. So let me put this in my cutter. I need to get a new cutter. I think this one's not as accurate as it could be, which is why I sometimes have to end up um, trimming and adjusting but it'll work for now. So cutting this so that I end up with two six by six inch pieces. So next I'm going to be scoring and let's get my scoreboard up here. Let's get this first piece. So I sort of have to decide um, I want this to be the cover, so I'll turn this over, make sure it's right side up. I'll turn this over, and because I want my middle section to be five inches in width, I'm working from this and this side for the other panels. So I've determined that, um... This first section here should have a score at three and a half. So that's one, two, three and a half. Brings us right here. Let's do a little score. Then this next section gets scored at eight and a half. So we come along here to eight and a half and do a score right there. Then I want the tiniest bit of... Um, a gusset or a spine. So I'm just going to go over one eighth of an inch, which puts me at eight and five eighths, and make another line. And then you end up with a flap here that's approximately three and three eighths inch, which uh, can be a pocket. going to fold like this. So let's get the second piece. The second piece is going to attach. So you have to figure out how do you want it to attach. Look at that. What the hell is that? Some place I need to trim up, obviously. My second piece is going to attach, so I have to figure out how, how I want that to look. Do I want it to be like that? And then come over. I probably do. So I'm also going to score on what I'm calling the wrong side. So for this one, we want this section here, this first section, to be five inches. So we're going to score at five inches. They're going to make sure we have a little spine there. So we're going to go five and one eighth. Right there, there's five. We did five, now we're gonna do five and one eighth just to get a little spine right there. Okay, and then this rest, the rest of this is going to be up the, to the designer. Um, you can make a little pocket here, which would be fun, which was what I think I'm going to do. But we don't have to do any more scoring at this point in time. All right, so that's it for the scoring. Next up is going to be the gluing. Okay, here's the two pieces that we scored and getting ready to attach them. This is what we're calling the front cover. 
See how it has that little one eighth of an inch spine there? Opens up like this. And then this is the second piece that we're going to attach. So we're going to turn them over so they're on their wrong side is what I'm calling that. And this piece is going to attach to this piece, which is a pocket. And I've already taped it up a little bit. See that? So it'll attach easily. And I don't have my, let me stop talking for a minute, my punch. I do want to put a little um, kind of a decorative punch out here to indicate that it's a pocket before I attach this. So what I'll do is turn this over and I am using tape instead of glue. Make sure that everything is right side up. And this isn't. Now it is. Let's see, they're both. Do I have you in frame? I do have you in frame. So what I'm going to do is take this part off. I'm going to make sure that it's down good. And I think what I'll do is speed this up so you don't have to watch how slow this goes. Okay, so you can't really see it because this is all blended paper here, but uh, once we get it covered with pockets and such. So here's where it attached. And that section went right underneath the spine, so it doesn't hamper that at all. And... Uh, if there's any imperfections, I will trim those, but that's how she glues together. So she ends up looking like this, and then this part's going to come in, and I think we're gonna make a pocket here on this end. So I got what I wanted. It's a five inch by six inch kind of Christmas card, lap book, folio thingy opens up like this. I've already used my corner rounder here and here. This part could be um, a pocket, but I'm just gonna leave it as a kind of flip out and decorate this, this, and this. And then I've got this pocket, then this section here. And I folded this end part. Remember we kind of left that as a kind of a free form until we figured out what to do. I decided just to go ahead and make it a, a narrow pocket and that ended up being, let's see, it's a little shy of two inches so it's one inch, let's see if I can do this, one inch, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so like one inch and seven eighths is what that is. Just enough for, you know, something, actually something substantial can stick in there because there's a lot of real estate right there, but I might decorate that area. So I'm going to get started on decorating this. And I want to start with this panel. And I was going to put um, a piece of vellum there, you know, like I have this uh, Jingle Bells, um, it's music paper, vellum. I have a big sheet of it that I printed. Something, you know, hanging there. 
But then I thought, no, how about, I loved this. Isn't this cute? By the way, this is um, doodle bug paper. Um, I love how innocent it is. It's like whimsical and sweet. I'm just in that mood. So I'm thinking this could go here. Um, do you think that fights a little bit too much? Like there's a lot of activity on this and a lot there. Maybe I do better with something like this. How about this? Just a little a warm wishes there. And instead of just gluing it down, how about just gluing it around the sides and making it a pocket, right? And then putting something in it. I made a couple of little fun things last night. I made this little ho-ho. Put some tool here, a little handmade with love. That's cute. I love these because they have a place to write on the back if you wanted to write. And then I attached this, a little pearl to this one. This is sweet too. So what if I glued this down and use this as a pocket? I'm sorry, put a tag in that pocket. I sort of like that. So I'm going to be working on this and sometimes I will pause and go scoop the litter box or warm up my coffee. So I don't, I hope you don't mind those interruptions, but that's just how I work. I think it's better than um, making this too long. So I think I'll just go ahead and glue this. Let's see if my glue is ready to go. I want to just, ooh, is that ever ready to go? I just cleaned the bottle. Maybe I left a little um, water in there. I hope not. Let's see. This is Art Glitter Glue. And I used to use Barely Art Glue. Barely Art Glue is a little bit thicker. This is runnier. Definitely runnier. But people love this one, so I thought, well, I'll give it a go. I'm going to spread this a little bit so I won't get too much seepage. What's that? And let's place it down. There we go. And I put this guy in him. I like that. I like the way the red picks up the red in the cup. And this one. This one looks like it's coordinated kind of, doesn't it? Kind of cute. Okay, so now I'm thinking about what to do here. I don't necessarily go in order, but I think these are easier than what I'm going to be doing over here. So I kind of like to do the easy stuff until I get warmed up. Um, the kit had a bunch of these. They're sort of like these lists. Here's one. Here's another one. There's a wish list. You could write anything on that one. Cut out a few of them. Oh, here's another one. Look how cute. My favorites. I don't know what that's for, but it kind of has this cooking. Look at that. Those sprinkles remind me of little sprinkles on cookies. It just keeps me hungry all day long. So this doesn't fit on here. But what I'm thinking I'll do is um, cut this bottom part off. And then take that part and glue it back on the bottom of this. So I'll have like this little tag. And then maybe do, you know, corner rounding or not. Glue it there. Is that enough? Then I'll put something in it. What do you think? Maybe yes, maybe no. So I've cut out this bottom part. I'm going to stick it right back on here. I think that I will... Do some corner rounding. Let's do a little distress inking. I wasn't going to add distress ink to these cards, but because they're so brown here, it kind of looks good. So I'm just going to add some of that. Maybe 
a little shallow um, notch. Let's try to get that in the center. Just a shallow one. Just a, so it's a suggestion of a pocket. Right. So love the paper on the back of this. Uh oh, one of my cats is calling me. I hope you don't hear that. I have the smartest cat, my sister. Sister? Her name is Sister. After she uses the litter box, she calls me to clean it. She started doing that about two years ago. I'm like, okay, is she just fastidious or what? Does she think that I'm neglecting my job? Like, I don't know. But it's as cute as can be. Except when I'm sleepy. If I'm sleepy and she gets into bed and she yells at me because I need to get up and clean the litter box, then I'm not too crazy about it. All right. I think that's pretty cute, don't you? I'm going to trim a little bit off of here and corner around it. Okay, it's glued together. Corner around it a little bit. And just put a little glue on the back. Spread it around a little bit. Now one of my cats is crying. I have one that's a real talker, Cappy. All right. Now, often what I do with thinner papers is after I glue something down, just put something like this on it, heavy, and let it set for five minutes while I go reheat my coffee. So that's what I'm going to do. But first, I think I'm going to put this Christmas guy, the Santa, in here. It's a little bit, you know, matchy-matchy, but I can always switch that out if I change my mind. So there we go, two panels done. So I wanna put something fun in this panel. This is a five inch panel, so is this, but it has a pocket, so is this, but it has a pocket. So this is the biggest real estate I have to do a feature. And I was thinking maybe um, like a policy envelope looking thing here, here, closes up and there's something inside. But I recently saw Angela Kerr do an envelope looking pocket and her instructions were pretty complex and I just like to do things quick and dirty. So what I did was take an eight and a half by 11 piece of uh, copier paper and I folded it corner to corner and then cut off this piece and that gives you a square, right? So then I folded it in half, figured out where center was on this, because that's going to help me, used my ruler and made a little mark like that. So the next thing was find center on my panel. And we know that if it's five inches, five inches, that two and a half would be the center, right? So I moved this down here kind of centered it, and I see that center on this panel is right between this heart and this snowflake. I love when that happens, because now I have a visual marker, and I don't have to make a mark on my actual card, just in case I'm unable to cover it up. So 
What I'm going to do next is cut out a piece of cardstock in this triangular shape and then fold in the sides and glue them and then it should be ready to glue down. All right? So let me get busy on that. Okay, using this template, I cut out a piece of cardstock approximately the same dimensions. It's interesting to note that the full width came out to almost 12 inches. And if I kind of center it here, I can see my center is six. Hopefully this is center also. And now I have to figure out where I'm going to score so I can fold it in. So we know that the card is five inches, that panel we're using is five inches, but we don't want this to be five inches because then it's gonna uh, get in the spines, right? So we want it to be a little bit less. So starting here, that center, let's move this. There's one, two, and a half. So we know we want two and a half inches on each side if we want it to be exactly five. We don't want it to be exactly five. So I'm going to bring it in just a smidge, just like a fourth of an inch, like that. Fingers crossed that's what it's good enough. So now here we are at six, so we're going to go two and a half that way. One, two, and a half but take off a fourth, I'm sorry, an eighth of an inch. Is that an eighth of an inch or a fourth? It's eighth. There we go. So, let's fold this in and fold this in. So, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere. I had these leftover pieces on that cardstock. So I'm going to see if I can't figure out, you know, another little layer that'll go here, we'll go here and here to make some little sub pockets. So let me figure that part out. So while you were taking a nap, I decided to turn this inside out. I had started out like this, but I decided that I'd like more of this fun paper to show. So I just switched it. Fun? So I trimmed off a little on the bottom, like about one eighth of an inch, because I think it was a little bit too tall for this. So it's all right if that top corner, at the top, if it peaks, you know, right there. But I think it's a better fit with this trimmed off a little bit. So this ends up being, of course, less than six inches tall because our panel is six inches tall. Yeah, so it's like about... Is that one eighth? I don't even know. Hopefully you can see. Here's six inches and it's just two little notches shorter so it fits better. And then I took some scraps and made some little triangular pieces to fit here. Actually, I think this is the one for here, yeah. Here and here. This one's gonna go on the outside. This will go under. So I just kept trimming them until I can get enough of the red, an equal amount of the red to show on all sides. So while I was doing this, I had a thought that we could actually make this envelope pocket interactive by leaving it open down here and putting a glue dot, just putting a glue dot here and it's mate right there. 
so that you could open it up and then see the contents. And of course, inside here, we would fashion some kind of a little um, band, you know, like a little short pocket. And so we could stick things into that pocket like that. And then I remembered that I'm trying to keep this card simple. <laughs> so it'll be easier for you to do, quicker to do. So I'm trying to hold back, I'm gonna trying to rein in that creativity a little bit. So next up, I'm gonna be gluing this. So I got everything in my envelope pocket glued down here and here. Close this up glued along the bottom here to close that pocket so nothing will fall out and left um, these parts right here left this open and this open so that's not glued down and it's going to go right here and I think I'll just glue the bottom part down and leave the top kind of open and loose. I, I've learned from uh, junk journaling that you sometimes don't glue down everything because you never know. You might want to make a little tuck spot later. I don't think I'm doing a tuck spot here, but it keeps your options open. She says that she just added glue there so there could be no tuck spot. So let me spread this around a little. Seems to be enough. And I didn't show you that I put glitter spray on it. Where is that bottle? Oh, I left it in the kitchen. But it's the um, Tim Holtz Mica Spray. This is called Cocktail Party. Just adds a little bling to it. So let's see if we can get this in between. And then just let it land nicely. All right, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna press. I notice that if I rub when I'm gluing on, I have moved things before and then wondered why they were crooked. Like, I tried my best to get it laid down properly and it ended up crooked. And it's because even when you're holding it down and there's glue underneath, just the natural movement of your, of your body will slide it. And so I just kind of press until I'm pretty sure that it's secure. All right. Isn't she pretty? Now, for this little pocket, maybe something like this. This little December 25th can slot right in there. And then I showed you this. I loved that. That could go in. Or, I liked this too. Cookies for Santa. Fits down in there too. Should probably overstuff it a little bit with a few things. I might have to make um, a tag to stick in there too. So, now we're going to be moving on to another part. Before I cut up this cardstock too much, let me just do a little show and tell of the paper pack itself. It's done by Doodle Bug Design Inc. And this particular theme is called Gingerbread Kisses. Really attracted to the sweetness of it and the colors. Unfortunately, it's not really thick cardstock. Nowhere on the paper pack or on the advertising does it say what the GSM is. And I'm used to printing out digital kits on 67-pound cardstock. 
and I'm going to guess that this card stock is about 44 and because they don't advertise what it's going to be I suppose at any given time they can print it onto whatever paper they have available and you just get what you get so you can see here that it's not glossy unlike a lot of nice cardstock that I buy that has a glossy finish to it some polka dots I've already cut into that cut into this too but I love the background paper I would have loved to have had a sheet of this but I also wanted to use those here's a good background paper don't care so much for that but I'm sure it has its place this is cute candy canes and what are those little things called gumdrops candy canes and gun drops this is snowflake paper and it's advertised as being aqua but it's more of a green very pretty a bunch of Santas a good background paper love this a bunch of gingerbread guys this is a versatile background paper. I love those colors. They threw in some pink hearts. And this is cute. Santas and trees and little gingerbread guys. And this that looks like that candy shot that you sprinkle on cupcakes. And I picked up some, they're called mini icons. They are just this, these little images that are stickers, three pages of them. And then this one actually comes with the 12 by 12 paper pack. They're glossy stickers. Haven't used any of them yet, but I really like those. And I also picked up die cuts. This is a package of die cuts. Some of them are kind of large for my application, and some of them are just perfect, so. So I'm looking to decorate this spot here, which is my pocket. And I don't have a lot of real estate there because I cut this, um, what do you call that? The little thumb notch, kind of deep. See that, how it's kind of deep? So it only leaves me about, I think, it's like two and three fourths inches to work with. So I have this scrap. It's about two and one, I'm sorry, two and three fourths inches wide. I have a lot of it. So it's long enough that I, I won't even have to add attachment pieces to the policy envelopes like I do sometimes. I will just cut it about a half an inch longer top and bottom so I'll have a connector piece right here so this part up here will be a connector piece and this part down here will be a connector piece then I will cut it in half and probably use um, one of my punches to make it kind of decorative to keep it simple rather than you know putting it in my uh, die machine and making something fancy so I'm going to start working on that. So first things first, let's get this um, paper right sized. So I'm putting it in an area that is six inches tall, right? So we know the base of it's going to be about six inches. That's what the base is going to be, about six actually less than six because you know we want some room for gluing and such and then I want an, an extra inch do I want an extra inch yeah I'm gonna do an extra inch for now I can always cut it down for the top and bottom connector pieces so let's just get that cut like that and then I might as well cut it in half while I've got the board out Right. It's 
always easier for me just to fold in half. Try not to get it uh, cattywampus to see where that halfway is going to be. And it doesn't have to be exact because we can always trim it up. But that's about, it's about halfway. So we'll cut that. See how this uh, cutter is shredding stuff? That's why I have this. It just takes off those little bits quite nicely. And then if I take a little bit too much paper, then I go over it with my red ink like that. Fixes it up. So now we've got those pieces cut. So again, got to make sure it got it the right way. We don't want Santa upside down, right? So let's get the folio back here. So my vision is I'm going to have this top part up here and then this part here. I'm going to score here and here so I can fold it. And then this part here is going to have um, a decorative feature. And I think I'm going to use this. Kind of fond of that kind of a punch. So I just want to make sure that it's not raggedy. You know what? Well, no, this is kind of raggedy on this end, too, isn't it? So rather than have you watch me make this paper smoother, I'm going to do that with the camera off and then get back to you. So I've got my policy envelope started. Here's the bottom flap. It's about a one half inch tab. That's my connector tab. This is the part that's going to be glued down right here. And then the top one has the same thing, one half of an inch. And that'll be glued down here. And the trick is getting it to fit so that it kind of kisses in the center. Although it doesn't have to kiss. You can leave some room. I've seen people do them kind of far away. I've done that when I had a, you know, smaller scraps and I knew they weren't going to reach. It wasn't a big deal. It just created a kind of peekaboo to whatever was going to be behind that. So it should look like that. As far as the punching goes, this guy... Say this is the part you want to punch. I'll show you quickly. You stick this end, end in like that. Push it up so it's in that corner. Press. Then flip it like that. Stick it back in. Push it up to the corner. And it's perfect. Can you see that? That's how it's done. So now I think I'm going to do this cheat technique that I do sometimes, which is to tape these two sections together exactly the way I want them. And I'll use some of my, um, you know, this temporary tape stuff on it. Then when I glue it down, I don't have to guess at where I am. It'll be perfect. So let me just do that part. So I'm going to use this scoreboard to help me just so I have something to brace and hold this in alignment like that. See, I can press up against that and it's not going to go anywhere. 
Same thing for this. That's my top and bottom. So I can kind of get it to kiss right there. So I'll get some of this temporary tape, a couple of pieces of it maybe. I forget what you call that tape right now, but you guys know what it is. You use it. You can put it on and when you take it off, it's not going to rip the surface of your cardstock. It even works well on digital papers. So that's a little cheat technique. So now we know it's going to kiss top and bottom when we glue it on. So then all we really have to figure out is horizontally where we want it to be, right? So I'm going to glue it, turn off the camera so I can do a good job, and I'll be right back with you. So here's how it came out. Glued down here and here. I trimmed in just a little bit right here and right here. You don't have to do that, but sometimes that piece shows on the other side a little bit. So if you trim it, I think it looks a little bit neater. So next I'm going to be punching holes and putting my little circles here for the closure. But first, I'm thinking ahead to what's going to go inside. And of course, this is so narrow, so it's going to have to have something narrow. So I've cut this... Um, just slightly under two and three-fourths inches wide because remember these policy pockets are two and three-fourths. So this is just slightly under. I might have to trim it a little more because whatever I put under here has to fit within those constraints, right? So I'm thinking... I'm thinking I'm going to make like a, a sort of, I think you call them like a library card pocket, where you have something like this on the bottom, and then you have a part sticking out here, and then you can put something else in it, you know, a tag. That's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. And probably so it won't fall out of here when it's closed. Probably put a little pocket here to anchor it. Just something that's enough so that it can stick in it, right? And kind of hold it there. You can already see I'm going to want this a little narrower, I think, than it is. So going to work on that. Okay, here's what you missed. I showed you this piece of paper that I'm going to make this little um, sort, of, sort of library pocket situation out of. I corner rounded here and here. And then because this is not substantial enough, I took the rest of this piece, because it was long, and trimmed it down so I can glue it here just to give that more stability. So I'm going to end up with, you know, kind of a pocket like that. And I did narrow it a little bit, just took off a little bit so it'll fit inside that policy folder. And then because I want um, this pocket to relate back to these flaps, I cut this with my scallop punch and I'm going to glue it right here as a little trim and then we'll be putting a little slot here, we'll punch a slot there, put some twine or something in it and then maybe use a sticker or two down there then it'll fit in there. I don't think I'm going to make a little pocket at the bottom to hold it. I'm just going to trust that Maybe it'll stay in there once we get that fastened closed. And um, if it doesn't, do I care? <laughs> I probably don't. So if this meets with your approval, if, if you like where this is going, um, I'm going to start on it. 
Okay, sorry you didn't have my camera on. I'm gonna start gluing this. I found one of these little things. You know how I'm always trying to get that uh, music paper vellum into my projects. I glued this. See, it's a whole thing, but I glued it so that that glue under the vellum doesn't show because I glued it on before I'm going to glue this down, right? In fact, I can probably just trim off these edges just a little bit. Could use my cor corner rounder, but this looks like it's easy enough to do that without screwing it up too badly. And uh, if you do screw it up badly, you always have ink to hide. It's already starting to seize up a little bit from the glue. So, now I'm gonna, I just can't get over how runny this glue is. It's just like really watery. You know what it is? It's winter here and so the glue's not hardening as fast as it was in the summer. That could be the difference. Right now my craft room is freezing. All right, so let's see if we can get this glued on. The best we can. Knowing that if we mess it up, you can always trim or ink, hold it down, give it a good press, right, like that. I kind of like that little decorative thing. And now I think I'm going to carefully do the sides, try not to get too much, just kind of dot, dot it. Just the sides, because it's a pocket, remember? Trying to stay in frame. So, let's close that. Then this little piece is going to go here. Just put some glue. Spread it around. And look closely. We try to get it in the center and not go over. There you go. Just want a little bit of the paper showing on that side right there. So I think this is glued down enough where I can do my test. And make sure that we don't have glue in places that we don't want it because we do want a tag to fit down in there, right? So let's just kind of work on this a little bit. And sometimes I've used too much glue and I just cheat and make the tag that I stick down inside a little bit thinner. <laughs> so now let's put this on it and hold it down and give it a chance to dry. So I let this sit under um, my little fun thing last night so it would flatten. So I'm showing you the finished little library card. If you can see, maybe you can't, but I sprinkled some, um, let me find it for you. Here it is. Distress Stain Merry Mint. So it's kind of a teal green splatter spray. Has kind of a sheen to it. So I sprayed the whole card with that. And then I made, you can see that better. Then I made this little tag that fits inside. This was a scrap 
So I just trimmed it up a little bit, glued it on, added this little bun thing, tied it with some striped ribbon. And of course the back of this is the Santa Claus because it's the rest of this paper strip that I had wanted to use. Looks like that on the back. I added these little things. I do that sometimes if I don't make gussets. Just to strengthen the sides so they don't accidentally pop open. But I think she came out cute. And you'll notice that the um, little vellum scallop that I had um, was removed. I decided that it really didn't enhance it. So I just took it off. And... I like it better without it. I really do. So it's going to fit in here. So next I need to work on my closures. I've already punched a little hole here, a little hole there. Found some scrap paper. I think I'm going to use this side. It's kind of generic to punch some holes, some buttons. I don't even think that's a good one. That's not a good one. Let's punch a little further in. There we go. There's one. I'll probably speed this up so the video is pain free. I need four because I like to double them up. I like to glue two of them together for strength, right? So I'm going to glue two of those together and then I'm going to punch them. Where's my glue? There we go. Let's see if it thickened up overnight. Why does everything have a, a cat hair on it this morning? Let's just put a little dab of glue. I'll probably hit the edges with a little tea stained ink. How will those look? They're sort of jumbo, but I sort of like that. All right, let's put the lid back on our glue and it's going to go right about there. So, where's my puncher? Try to get center. That's my best guess on the center. That kind of crunched that. I might have to do that one over. Let's see if I can get that kind of dent out of there. I think it's a little off center. Does that bother me? I'm not sure. I need time to process. When I'm thinking and processing I like to do some inking. Kind of calms me a little bit. That's not the good side. Is that the good side? No, this is the good side. Hmm. Using tea dye. All right, so I have. These little fun brads, they were gifted to me like 20 years ago. And I thought the white would look good in here. 
So we just stick it in the hole. Spread the little feet out. So where'd my other one go? Here it is. At the good side, this is this is the good side. Let's put it right here. Now I may um, cut more circles for this side. Sometimes I do that. I can't see. There we go. There we go. I started to say, cut a couple of circles just to glue here on this side, just for a nice finished look. Right? Yeah. This one looks a little close. And then we need some, I think I'll, do matching twine. I've got this red, this green, but I think I'll match with um, that tag. So where's my trusty scissors? Just guess about, I don't know, that much. You don't need a whole lot because those little buttons are pretty close together. So I like to just go under. I used to tie these under. I don't know where I thought they were going. Um, but now I just twine them. Twine them around. And if the recipient of the card wants to remove it all together, they can. Kind of like that. Isn't that cool? So I didn't put this guy in, but you know. He'll be right under there, and I may still make a little holder for him at the bottom so he doesn't slide out. So I'm going to glue this closed, and then next we're going to work on um, doing a kind of cover on the front. So let me show you what I'm doing here. I was unhappy with the way these buttons were fitting. There was a lot of movement in them, and I was like, why are they moving around so much? And then I remembered, it's because I use this punch to make my hole, and I usually don't do that. I usually use my awl. Where is my awl? Here. That makes the slightest little hole, and it's a tight hole. So... I'm revamping this. So because I already have those big holes there, I'm going to patch those with um, these. I entertained this side, but I think it's a little too busy. I'm going to stay with this side. So I'm going to patch it with this and then redo the hole. Right? So how we do that, is to put a little glue. Let's try to get it the way we want it this time. So first I'm putting this on and that's just a decorative base. That's what it's going to become, a decorative base. I'll put this one on. This is also just a decorative base. So the next step is just to punch a hole with all right in the center. Is that center? like that 
and then like this. See that hole is much smaller. So that's going to make the little brad hold tighter. And what I did was use these little candy pieces. That might be the better side. Yeah, it is the better side. These little, I don't know what they're called. What are they called? Mints. Little peppermints. I got this from Target. So let's stick this brad in. It's got its legs a little bit already open, so it's a little tricky to stick them down in there. Let me show you the other one since it's already in. It's faster. Close its legs a little bit. So it's going to stick right in this tighter hole. Right like that. And now when I close it, it'll be tighter. See how that's tighter? That's not going to go anywhere. And I like that. It gives me an opportunity to use that little piece of candy. And then I've cut these other backing pieces that can be glued right there, which I do sometimes anyway, just to cover up the mechanism. So I'm going to do this one next. And uh, when I'm done, we'll start working on the cover, I think. Is that the good side? Yes, this is the better side. Those in like this. Isn't that cute? Those candies are cute. And then we try to get this into this smaller hole, decidedly a smaller hole made by a punch. Is it coming through? Let's see. He's kind of bending to the side a little bit. Let me lift this guy up so I can see a little better. Slot them in like that. Do a little press. Spread his little feet to get them on there. So I like that better and it's cuter. And so your string goes under the candy, right? It goes under the candy because that other piece is just for decoration. Right like that. So I just wanted to share this update with you. Next we'll work on the cover, I think. Okay, I'm in the planning stages of um, the cover, which is this part right here. And I had a lot of options as far as these little horizontally shaped cards that come with this paper pack. And I really like this little gingerbread house since this whole um, theme is gingerbread kisses. So I'm thinking, uh, glue it down almost like in the center. I cut out this piece that's a little bit larger, not because I wanted to... Um, add more patterns because there's plenty of patterns in the cover itself but it just makes it feel a little bit more substantial so i'm thinking like that and then i have this snowflake it has iridescent glitter on it I have it left over from some other project i did a couple of years ago so i'm thinking maybe in that corner and I had a plethora of sentiments to use. Snow much fun, Christmas wishes, Christmas memories, seasons greetings, visiting Santa, um, sprinkled with love. 
I liked this. I like it because it has white print. Happy Holidays. I don't really want black print. Here's the Merry Christmas, but it just kind of feels out of place there. So I think I'm going to go with Season's Greetings. Although I, I like to say Merry Christmas whenever I can, but Season's Greetings will work probably on the bottom. And then I cut a piece of scrap to go underneath it to make it more substantial filling. But I might even let it peek out the bottom or the top when I glue it down. My other thought was adding some snow to this. And I have this glitter snow. And all that would take is using my double-sided tape. I have one fourth inch double-sided tape. Just lay it down around the outside, sprinkle this on it. But if I do that, I get that nice effect, but I lose this um, pink check. And I really like the pink check. I really want to keep that. So I'm probably just going to glue it down um, the way I've shown you. And then I have this recycled piece of ribbon. I think it's, it'll go around pretty good. Um, I need to press it to make it nice again. But I love the pink checks. I think it picks that up. So I'm going to get started on doing some glue down. Okay, I'm sharing this with you because I'm a good sport. I decided I wanted some shimmer on this. So I have this acrylic paint I got from Target. It's called Sparkly Lip Gloss Shimmer Finish. And I put some in a cup and uh, added some water to it. You can see the consistency. And then I put my paintbrush in it and then just hit it to make drops fall. See that? It's kind of like pink snow. I'm not going to go any further with this experiment because, you know, I've never done that before. And I don't want to ruin it. Not that I couldn't just pick another picture and do this all over again, but I think that's kind of sweet. I'm going to go with that. Um, should I put some on this too? Maybe. Let's try it. Maybe one of the splats might land on it. I think it needs to be more watery, actually. Oops, there, I got some. There. See that? It's a little bit gloppy, but let's just say that, you know, I'm kind of a gloppy glosser, so, and I'm okay with that. So I need something to put this gift card in, so let's see what we can whip up with this scrap. Let's, um take off this side first. So it's going to be tight, but I think we can do it so we're going to have to kind of want it like about this big. That should fit. So I guess this would be a, um, a side closure card. Since I already made a fold here, right? I already made a fold on this. And if I unfold it, you'll see the fold right there. But that's okay. So it'll fit down in there, yes. So what we need is a bottom part and a top part. So it looks like 
just like about um, a generous fourth of an inch. So I just threw my... Uh, I'm abusing my um, tools. So let's see, we want... Just want an easy fold line. So let's say like about here and do that again on the other side so we can have a top and a bottom. Well, instead of guessing, let's just like, yeah, it looks like about, let's see, how about that? We'll have that be the bottom since it's smaller. So let's fold this up. Fold this down. See if it still fits in there. Yep, it does. So those bottoms can fold, but I don't really need this extra here. So let's cut this extra part off right here. So I don't really need that. And I think I'll take this part off. I'm not even sure that's the right part. But, you know, I'm feeling adventurous this morning, so. All right. So. So we'll put this side in up right here and we'll glue along here to close that. We'll also put some glue along there. And then this becomes our flappy flap. It's just a simple little flappy flap. We don't really need a flap. I can just do a kind of a, a dip right there, which I think I will do anyway. Where's my, here we go. I want, oops, sorry, abusing more equipment this morning. Okay, so I kind of want like, can you see that? Just kind of want like, I actually want a deep one. There you go, got a nice deep one. I want a deep one so that the person who gets it can actually reach in there and get the card, right? Get the card out. So, theoretically, it'll fit. So, what I'm going to do now is just put glue here, glue on the sides. I might even put a little brace. Sometimes when I don't do a gusset, I just put a little decorative brace on like that, you know, just kind of make it decorative and it works. So I'm going to get gluing. Okay, here she is in all of her glory um, with this little tabby thing there on the weak spot, added a fun little um, sticker. And you notice that the little flappy thing is not on. I ended up cutting it off because even though it was sufficient, I cut this so deep that it showed just a little bit when I folded it over. I didn't like that, so I just cut it off. So a tip on making these thumb notches. See how that comes out? It fits perfectly. 
Just cut them on one side, not both. I used to take my punch and cut the whole thing so that there would be this punch out here and then another one on that side. It doesn't work so well for the recipient because you need a place for your thumb to press against when you get it out. See that? If you cut that off, you don't have it. Anyway, another quick and dirty tutorial.